To begin with, I would really like to thank you for all the love that you've given to us. The channel recently reached the 2k subscriber mark. We will do a small giveaway. We'll tell you the details in the upcoming video. As far as this video is concerned, it's been more than a month that S10 Lite was launched. However, Samsung has not said anything on when they'll give the 4K 60fps recording. Is this what you expect from a tier 1 company? Now the experience didn't start in this way. As I unboxed the device and started using it, I was really happy. Great build quality, Infinity O display, Super AMOLED plus screen, 60Hz though. Uh, glass stick back but the overall build quality is good, great cameras. However, annoyance start creeping in as I started setting up the device. And at every phase I started feeling that this is a very very half baked in device. You would find options that should have been there and missing. We started facing hardware and software issues. Device starting on its own, app opening on its own and at times it was becoming non-usable. It could be our device only but then the problem is there and we thought that will highlight. Post this we filed a replacement with the flip card and I was thoughtful enough to capture the IMEI number when I was recording the issues that I was facing. Despite this video they rejected the replacement and then we had to take it to the social media post which they got into action. Now the technicians they were sending in they wanted us to reproduce restarts in front of them which is impossible. We showed them the video but still they do not agree. Finally after fighting a long fight, they agreed that okay the problem is with this phone, yes you are showing us the IMEI number and agreed to replace the device. On contacting Samsung tech support, I told them that the 60fps option is not there but for them the 30fps option which is the UHD one is the 60fps. They argued and never agreed to me. Post which a lot of them did remote access and still they were not aware about what is the difference between 30 fps and 60 fps. After that I escalated this to the Samsung India CEO desk and got a call from senior tech support which once again did remote access and agreed that yes 4k 60 fps is missing. Post that they asked for 48 hours and said that they'll come back after discussing this with the software team. Now the senior tech support team did call back and said that yes the feature is not there and as per their discussion with the software team this will come by an update on the 28th Feb. However till date as on the 1st March I have taken a snapshot this update was not given. When I asked them to share this in written they said you have to write it back to the normal support team which in turn will come to us and that's when we'll reply. Which I did and all I've got is that you have been told about the right answer they have never been explicit about this. Now another thing that surprises me is why is that senior YouTubers are not raising this concern? Has any one of them highlighted it? I mean they are there for the million views and subscribers which is good but what about these things? This gives me a sense that you know YouTube as a platform is losing its soul. What do you say? So this is it friends. Here is our long term review of almost a month's time that we have spent with the S10 Lite from end to end journey right from unboxing it till replacement and everything that will tell you we have seen. Pros, cons, you can call it love it or hate it or is it a hit or shit of a device? Find out. Here are the specifications of the S10 Lite. They are really good. Snapdragon 855 with Adreno 640 GPU. You get 8 GB of RAM and 128 GB of internal storage. 6.7 inches of Full HD Plus Infinity O display which is Super AMOLED Plus. You get hybrid SIM tray, 4500 mAh of battery with fast charger out of the box. You get in-display fingerprint scanner, face unlock. You get NFC, pro grade camera but no headphone jack. We are unboxing the prism white color. Just keep in mind that if you go for a white color, everything in the box is white like the charger, the cable. But if it's black or blue, the charger, cable, earphones, they all would be of black color. Here is the box. Samsung has gone all black this time. On this sticker, you get to see the model number, the color and the storage. Otherwise, from specification point of view, nothing has been mentioned. There's another sticker which tells you about the price, the content where it's manufactured, etc. Let's commence the unboxing. 
When it comes to colors, we have opted for the prism white and we think it looks the best. What do you say? Not that the black and blue shades are bad, it's just that it looks more premium with the silver bezel around it. The in-hand feel is nothing short of premium and it's lightweight as well. The phone, despite the size and battery it packs, is not heavy. Weight distribution is spot on too. Let's check the rest of the stuff. To take this box out, I found some YouTubers literally struggling. There is a section on the top using which you can easily pull it out. At the back of this box, you get the SIM ejector tool. Inside this box, you get the cover, the quick start guide and other important documents. The cover is nice, nothing exceptional. At least some protection till you get your favorite one. This will do the job in the meanwhile. This section comprises of the charger, Type-C cable and earphones. You get a 25 watt fast charger which is Type-C to Type-C in the box. Also I would like to mention that the phone can handle a 45 watt charger as well. Type-C charging cable. Good to see that Samsung has provided earphones out of the box. And because there is no headphone jack in the S10 Lite, the earphones is Type-C. Also alongside this you get some ear tips which is also very good. Now wherein it's good to see that the back is protected with this plastic sheet. However, the camera module has been left unprotected. There's no plastic sheet on it to protect it and it can get scratchy during transit. You never know. There's a pre-applied sticker here wrapping the bezel. The phone comes with a pre-applied tempered sheet which is excellent. However, we don't know about the screen protection Gorilla 4 or 5 or 6. On the top, you get the microphone. At the bottom, you get the Type-C charging port followed by a microphone and speaker grill. It's good to see that the frame is made out of metal. Sadly, it misses out on the 3.5mm headphone jack. On the left side, you get the SIM tray. Now, if you're someone who is on the heavier side of usage of the memory, Samsung S10 Lite has a hybrid SIM tray. It was good to see a gasket around the SIM tray. You can use either two SIMs or a SIM or a memory card, which can be expanded up to 1 TB. On the right, you get the volume and the power on and off button. The camera module protrudes a fair bit, but not too much. The front camera is of 32 megapixel at f2.2. We have a triple camera setup here. At the top, you have the 5MP macro lens, followed by the primary lens, which is of 48MP, equipped with super steady OIS. And at the end, you also get the wide angle camera. The flash is of single tone. When it comes to setting up the device, you get Samsung Switch as an app, which is used to transfer data from your old phone to the new phone. But it takes hell lot of time and error out so many times as well. Watch it. Now, as you'll set up the phone, you'll get these options. I would really like you to have a look into the ones which are optional because these are more on the lines of sharing your personal data to Samsung. Also getting marketing information. So I'm not sure how much you will be into it, but just have a look at it. As you move ahead, with the option to copy the data, you tap copy and then next. You are asked how you would like to connect cable or Wi-Fi. When it comes to cable, Samsung, you should have given the converter, else the person should have a Type-C phone, as in charging port. We opted for Wi-Fi, which took so much tries before the connection could be established. And you have to download the Smart Switch app to complete this process. Now. The data was not properly assessed. We finally used a third party application to complete this process. Every time we tried to establish the connection, it error out. Just have a look at this. And seriously, it was so very annoying. We used the QR code option, swap their places, directions and whatnot. But similar problem persisted.
Now the fingerprint scanner is not one of the fastest, but then we found it to be adequate and every time it worked fine. So we were kind of satisfied with this. Now keep a look on the lock. You'll see that it takes considerable time to unlock the phone. See? It takes around a second. But there is an option to make it faster and even reach the screen that you were last at. How about now? Let me know in the comments below if you definitely see an increase in the speed. Here is a sample of how this will work. Whichever screen you were last were at, it will lead you to it only. Now I've got a decent sized palm, however the phone is big. It is not easy to operate it with one hand. The back is curved around the corners which gives you a good grip. However, it's praiseworthy to mention that Samsung has done a great job managing the size and thickness of the phone. If you have seen some reviews on the S10 Lite, you would see that the YouTubers at times say that it's a Super AMOLED display. It's basically a Super AMOLED plus display. The difference is at the sub-pixel level, in Super AMOLED display there are 8 sub-pixels and in Super AMOLED plus display there are 12 sub-pixels. S10 Lite comes with an Infinity O display. It's 6.7 inches Super AMOLED Plus. The viewing angles are great. This is a HDR 10 Plus display with the aspect ratio of 20 to 9, 394 pixels per inches, and 1800 into 2400 resolution. Visibility outdoor would not be a problem. The bezels are really thin, giving the phone more than a 90% of screen to body ratio. Now on the Samsung website, it's not specified exactly what ratio it is, but I think it should be more than 90%. Just have a look how thin the bezels are all across. Now let's take the opportunity to discuss the dark mode as well. Wherein it looks good and nice, I'll turn off the light and I'll take down the brightness to the lowest. Just have a look at the bottom left hand side panel, what really happens there. You'll see that there is a green tint to it and it's very much noticeable when you have the brightness around 10 or 20% maybe. Now this definitely hints toward the fact that this is a pentile display which comes with RGB strip which is red, green, blue and I think maybe at the bottom the greens are still more alive as compared to the red and green. This is an issue which was once noticed on the HTC One S which The Verge highlighted as well. I'll give you a picture of that as well. But then uh, this is something the Samsung company could have tweaked a little bit while testing these panels. But I think this debate can go on and on because AMOLED panels have their own characteristics. I'll also show you a video of the Vivo Z1 X panel. I was kind of surprised with that as well. Now we also checked out the settings within whatever we had to see if that can tweak it but nothing helped. So this is something you would have to live with it and it's kind of a characteristic of an AMOLED but I think companies can kind of fix it or alter it. I mean they can definitely do something around it. Having said that, Pentile display are not bad. They are more energy efficient and are really good when it comes to providing HDR displays. Now here is a sample of the Vivo Z1X panel and I found it pulsating. You can see it's kind of pulsating as in the light is going on and off. See, just have a look at the bottom bar, the three bars as in you'd see that it's kind of pulsating. I could also see the color shift here as well but then in S10 light it was kind of a little more greener than what I could see here but then I think as I mentioned before it's something that a part and parcel of AMOLED display. Now the S10 Lite comes with Android 10 out of the box and Samsung UI 2.0. 
despite it being kind of structured and full of so many options there is definite definite room of improvement in many areas which you'll see now now this is how the settings page looks like you get all the options for example you can see add screen here at the bottom i mean it's highly customizable and at the bottom they have given some shortcuts as well which are very helpful so far so good Samsung provides a theme store from where you can purchase or buy the themes. Now in case you want to forward your calls, you would not get option under mobile networks. For that, you have to go to the phone icon, tap on it, click on the three dots, go to settings and under supplementary services, you will find this option. Now I really didn't like the name supplementary services. It could have been easier by just putting this under mobile networks by the name call forwarding. In case you want your favorite song to be the ringtone of the phone, you can't do it directly from the song itself. You have to get into ringtone settings. From there, you click on add and then you select the song. For that, you have to remember the name or you search it. Luckily, this is not a problem with the pictures. You click on them and you get the option to set them as wallpaper. This is another weird thing that I've noticed. If you're watching a 4K video, you can increase the brightness if you're watching in this view. But as you do a full screen, you are not allowed to change the brightness. And I wonder why is that so? You can see that prompt coming in. What if you want to increase or decrease the brightness? This is really weird, Samsung. In order to do so, you keep going back and forth. Now let's talk about managing storage. Let's say I want to delete some files from here. As I click on videos, I only get the option to delete them. I cannot play them. I'm not getting a preview. So I don't know which video I need to delete from here. I would now need to go to my files specifically to all the folders to see which video is there and I can delete. This is really a cumbersome process. I hope over there, the first screen that we saw, if a preview would have been available, that would have made my life easy. In fact, if you try to analyze the storage over here, you don't get the option to further move ahead. So this is a roadblock again. While I was scrolling through the wallpapers and looking them one by one, I found some pictures getting skipped. It was a surprise to me. I felt if I've deleted those, but then when I went back to the grid view, I found they were there, but for some reason, S10 Lite was picking up pictures randomly. I mean, there could be some AI at the background because I found, for example, pictures that were for Nike, they were getting picked together rather than the picture of something else coming up after that. But then once again, this is something either you may like or may not. And there's no option of this to turn off in the settings as well. I mean, once again, I leave it to us as a new to whether you like it or not. Personally, I did not. Now, I did roam around into the settings to see if there's something around the AI which is working at the background, but did not get anything around that to figure out why this is happening. The device comes with Snapdragon 855 coupled with Adreno GPU 640. Initially, we did not face any problem. In fact, with the gaming and other things, we never faced a problem. We played Real Racing 3, PUBG, temperature was in check. In fact, we ran N22 scores one by one multiple times and still we got similar numbers. There was no throttling issue that we saw. But later on, some hardware and software issues came in, resulting in replacing the device as I mentioned. Performance has been great. Need not to say that Snapdragon 855 is a great chipset, coupled with Adreno 640 GPU and 8 gigs of RAM. Let's see the gameplay and do check the volume. It's quite loud, guys. As it's a bottom final speaker, there are high chances that you may end up closing the speaker grill. During the gameplay, we did not face any lags, any frame drops or app crashes. 
Let's have a look at the temperature at the back. So we can see that it's around 27 degrees, 26.3 or 5. At the front, the max temperature that we have is 27.8, 27.9. So 28 if I round it off. It was 9.10 with battery at 11% when we started playing PUBG. During the PUBG gameplay, we did not face any lag, any frame drops and it was a smooth experience. The gameplay was for 17 minutes, we lost 9% battery, brightness was at 60% plus and sound at 80%. Post the end of this PUBG session, we also took a check on the temperature. In both the cases, whether front or back, we never found the device exceeding 40 degrees. You get UFS 2.1 which scored surprisingly rather well. With 8GB of RAM you can have a lot of apps in the memory and they open up fine. RAM management was good. We ran back to back 2 and 2 2 benchmark tests and you can see here it's 11.7. The battery temperature is at 27.6 degree and CPU temperature at 26.5 degree Celsius. Eston Light scoring a respectable score of 4,65,511. Increase in battery temperature is of 1.5 degrees Celsius and battery used is 3%. Let's do another run. In the second run, we are again able to get 4,62,849 of score and the increase in the battery temperature this time was a little higher which is of 2.4 degrees celsius and the drop at 4% in the battery. The vibration motor that has been used is really really strong. When I first witnessed it, it kind of brought a smile to my face because I found it reminiscent to 3310 that I liked, I liked anything. I've captured a video of this as well, just hear out the noise it makes as I got the call. I mean it's it's very very strong guys just I mean you have to feel it to you know relate to it in case you get to see this Eston light just try that out this started happening and no action could be performed from the top section apps torch etc used to start on their own that's not it we also started facing multiple restarts and it was really very bad of an experience now in case you face similar issue with any phone make sure you do make a video because this is what helped us to got the replacement done We also faced Java related issues, despite having applications which can open PDF files, they error out. We were not getting the option open with and use any of those applications. This basically called for resetting a lot of settings due to which entire settings for all the apps were to be done again. Now here is the issue that we were facing followed by the solution that was given to us by Samsung members team. This is another instance questioning the quality. I haven't seen any screen out of which the proximity sensor is looking this clear. If there is one area which has thoroughly impressed us, that is the battery and charging department. 
the 4500 mAh battery can easily give you screen on time of 7 hours and plus if you're a light user of around 5 hours if you're a heavy user and charging it you get the fast charger it's not the fastest but does the job and charges the battery within 65 to 70 minutes or around 60 minutes i mean it was really quick have a look at this video you'll see the screen on time as well as the charging from 0 to 25 till 100 percent with temperature check as well i as a user is not too much into gaming with my kind of usage i was able to get 7 hours 22 minutes of screen on time but if you're someone who is some bit into gaming or too much of gaming then i think you should easily be able to get around five hours of screen on time in case you're wondering how long it takes to charge the phone fully well we've got you covered guys now this is not the fastest charger available in the market however it's decently fast and you can see within 15 minutes we got 25 percent of the battery charged with the 4500 mAh battery this is excellent also the temperature was in check and throughout the 100 percent charging it remained controlled you can see the phone is fully charged the time it took and how much time it took to charge every 25% till 100%. Now Samsung has called S10 Lite's camera a pro-grade camera. But once again, we found areas where Samsung has not even you know, thought of considering the UI as in be it flash not available post 15% battery, I mean flash not usable in the wide angle mode, you cannot make macro video and whatnot. Despite the camera being good, there were a lot of areas where we found that you know camera needs a lot of improvement specifically the pro mode now this is the longest section of this video please watch it very carefully and you'll see what we are saying the very first option you get is the live focus now you can use this to make blur videos and you get these four effects the intensity of all these effects can be increased or decreased as per your liking you also get the option to turn on the flash now the same is applicable for the front camera as well. You can do similar stuff. You get the option to increase or decrease the intensity. The videos that get recorded are 1920 into 1080p only. There is no software based stabilization available, but then you get OIS. Let's have a look at this sample, which is without the blur effect and with the blur effect. Now we have tried to keep the environment a little busy. You can see a balloon, box, some flowers, trucks, etc. Let's see the bokeh video. Now this is the video with the blur effect on. You can see the balloon, the wall, the clock, the flowers, the box behind me, even the door. All of that has gone blur. And the edge detection is really nice. I mean, even if we find some minute of the misses, I think this can easily be fixed with an update. Now I'm just moving around to see if the blur effect is missed. So far, so good. Now that I've moved the frame, you can see the tablecloth and other things that are showing up, they're getting blur. Post few more updates, the quality should improve only. Now the previous video had the audio captured by the phone itself, we didn't use any mic. In this video, you can see that there is some mess on the blur effect. Specifically the fingers, you can clearly see even if I'm making the fist. And here are the other two samples that you can record this video in. Next option is live focus. You get the effects, no flash for the rear. Front you get the flash and you can use it in the wider mode as well. Here are some camera samples. All these pictures are captured in artificial lighting. The picture about to come 
In this, I've tried to create a section with my arm, bringing it in front of my face. See that box? The red box as in with the red lid that has also gone blur. So that area, I was thinking whether will get blur or not. I like this picture as well. The headphone hasn't been blurred. However, zooming in, you'll see that some part of curtain which is dangling has not been picked up in the picture, but otherwise it has come up really nice. Moving to the photo section. Number one, you do not get the option to turn on or off the HDR mode on the main screen. You have to do it from the settings every time. Number two, when it comes to flash, if the battery is at 15% or low, you cannot use the flash. You'll get a prompt which will show you in some time. Now you can clearly see that the battery is at 16%. I'll click a picture with the main camera and you can see it will fire away. But in the wide angle mode, it's again not there. Have a look at this. The flash fired. As I move to the wide angle mode now, there is no option. I seriously don't know why. The AI mode is most of the times correct. Hardly we have seen it missing out. Here are some camera samples. Now this picture has been clicked with the normal mode, followed by the wide angle mode. The colors are not oversaturated and color parity is great across. Now this photo is again a normal mode, followed by wide angle mode. And you can see the color of the trucks is similar. Now this is in artificial light and once again, the picture has come really good. This picture is against the sun and you can see how beautifully this got captured. Time to bring the HDR mode into action. Now the first picture is without the HDR mode on, followed by the HDR mode turned on. The picture has come up really well. Another sample, in the first one, you cannot see the CFL tubes, but as we turn on the HDR, the tubes are clearly visible within the petals of the chandelier. Now with S10 Lite, you can go up to 8x digital zoom. However, up to 5x is something more usable. Now the S10 Lite's 48MP camera didn't impress us. It didn't do justice to the size of the file that it was making and the clarity or detailing it was capturing. It wasn't up to the mark as well. We would not suggest you to use it. Here are the shots. Can you guess out of these two, which is a normal mode shot and which one is the 48 MP shot. Let me make it easy for you by zooming into the pictures. Now, can you guess? Well, on the left you have the 12 MP shot and on the right you have the 48 MP shot. Despite 48 MP, it's not doing justice to the picture. The details could have been better. Moreover, the size is on the higher side as well. Let's look into another sample that we have for you. Now, this is again a 12 MP shot and a 48 MP shot, which you can't make a difference unless you zoom. As you zoom in, you can clearly see that the 12 MP shot is a lot better. Look at that red dot, the green color, the blue, they've all come up correct. On the 48 MP, the picture has come up on the lighter side. Now these are some selfie shots which we have captured in artificial light with flash and also in a low light scenario with flash and with the night mode turned on for the front camera. Have a look at these pictures and let us know in the comments how to define the quality. I think they are good. You can clearly see how dark the background is. With the aperture 2.0, it's still picking up the colors really nice. Takes around 5 to 7 seconds to capture this picture, but the picture comes wonderful. This was with the night mode off, but this is with the night mode on. We'll also capture a picture using the flash. The flash is really powerful as I've mentioned. It's not white, but has a little bit yellowness to it, which is okay. It's not too yellow. Now let's have a look into the samples one by one. In the first one, we have not turned on the flash, nor we have used the night mode. In the second one, we are using the night mode and see how much difference it has made. The last shot is basically the one wherein we have turned on the flash as well. All of them have come up really good. 
We also noticed white balance issues. See this picture. The light is inaccurate. It was little on the yellow side which the wide angle was able to capture properly. Now in this video that is upcoming, have a look at the color of the curtain. See how purplish it gets when it's about to get out of the focus but when it's kind of in the focus it comes to the natural color which is light brown. Observe it. Now likewise in the photography section, in the videography section as well, for the wide angle mode you cannot use the flash. I'll make a quick picture with the non-wide mode and you can see I was able to turn on the flash. As soon as I move to the wide angle the flash gets turned off and I mean some budget phones are also able to do that so I think Samsung you should give this feature. Now this could also be a user based decision wherein the user could decide if they want to use a flash or not. But if the battery is at 15% you cannot use a flash. You also get the option to capture motion photo. Let's have a look at this. Videos and photos can be edited to decrease the length, add music, text, etc. Navigating through the video section, you can clearly see 4K 60 FPS is still not there. There has not been any statement by Samsung, nor the tech support has been able to help us. And the Samsung India CEO desk conveyed to us on a call that it would be there by 28th, but still not there. Now the EIS and the OIS mode only works in FHD mode. Anything beyond that, it will only be OIS based. Also, the super steady mode only works in FHD mode. The super steady mode doesn't work in any other format as in 4K 30fps, no. It's only FHD recordings where the super steady will also be enabled. Have a look at this. Now this video is made using the Redmi Note 8 Pro macro camera. Unfortunately, you cannot do this in S10 Lite. But see the gap between the housing and the camera module itself. The camera can travel 3 degrees with respect to stabilization which Samsung has told. Now see the camera in action. I've turned on the video mode and you can see how much it's traveling. It's really crazy. I haven't seen this much travel on any camera till date. I'm sure all of us or most of us sometime, someday would have been into an auto extra. Just have a look at the show. Now in order to understand how bumpy this ride is, just have a look at the guy's shoulder who's driving this rickshaw, auto rickshaw. You can see he's literally bouncing but then the video has come up really stable. Now the first sample was without the OIS on, this is with the OIS on. The frame has got wider and there is a slight dip in the color saturation which is uh, more noticeable when you make some night video. Now this gets recorded in FHD mode. However, Samsung has said that it can be done in UHD which is not possible right now which I have explained in the later part of the video. This is a low light video sample. You can see how dark it is and I am making this video. I will turn on the flash and likewise I mentioned it's very strong. See how bright the environment has become now. This is a video sample in artificial lighting. I've now turned on the flash and as I've said that you can swap between the cameras. We are now into the wide angle mode and you can see flash has turned off automatically. Color parity is good. Now I've gone back to the normal mode and you can see I have had to turn on the flash. I hope automatically it could have come up. We can zoom in 8x. Right now I'm at 5x or 6x and the overall picture is usable I must say. Well enough of the moustache thing. Well this is a night video. Uh, it's actually dark. However the phone has been able to pick up the color of the balloon, the flowers, wall, in fact my shirt as well. I mean it won't be something we can term as great but then it's fine. I mean in the darkness that we have here I mean it's it's okay. 
This is a 1080p sample. You can see the picture and then how much it crops the video. It does have stabilization but then I did not find it good at all. 4K sample with the S10 Lite. It has got a 32 megapixel camera with a fixed focus and a aperture 2.0. It's a sunny day. I'm barely able to open my eyes but you can see the quality. Sorry for the background noise as I'm on the roof. Uh, we're not using any external mic so that you could get a complete idea how is the phone's performance when it comes to recording. Right now it's directly facing the sun so let me know how did you find the overall quality. Testing the zooming capability we can do up to 8x digital zoom. Now please take note that we have not used any gimbal while making this video. Checking the autofocus. Samsung calls this a pro grade camera, but if you get into it, you'll see that there are not much options. A budget phone would have more manual or pro grade options than the S10 Lite has. I mean, I reached the state of Nirvana by going here. Now under more, you get rest of the options as well, like macro, super slow-mo, slow-mo, panorama, time-lapse, etc. Using the macro mode, the shots came out crisp. You can see the dust particle in the black area in this truck. The color reproduction is good, it's not oversaturated, and you will thoroughly like it. However, you cannot record video using the macro mode. Both with the rear and front you can capture slow-mo videos. With the rear you can also capture super slow-mo video which can go up to 720 at 960 fps. Now we have the videos one by one for you, four and all. First slow-mo followed by super slow-mo. Have a look at these. While making slow motion videos, sound does get captured. Hear the sound of the tractor in the background. These are some portrait shots from the rear camera, wherein the picture has come up good with right colors. However, there has been some areas wherein the portrait shots have struggled. At first glance this might look like a perfect picture but as we zoom in have a look on my hand and the corner of the hut you will find both of these things have been blurred as well which is not right. Within the small section of the sofa which is appearing you know alongside the hut and myself in between as in you could see that portion has been blurred which is nice. The panorama shots has come up good, the color parity, the dynamic range, but they have come too curved. Just have a look at that fire. This looks more like a boomerang shot rather than a panorama shot. So guys, here is the drill. We'll play the music at full volume first to show you that this is not a tweak video and then we'll bring the volume to half, post which I'll zoom in and right now the speaker is in focus. Can you play the music please? Please play it at full volume. So this is the full volume. Let's bring it to half. Can you put the phone down? I'm zooming in. It's 6x now and it had, it's at 8x now. Let's see how is the volume picked up. I myself is a S10 Lite user and I've bought it and people who have already bought this, no offense guys but just have a look at this picture from S10 Lite. 
And this is the picture from Vivo Z1X. I agree that the picture from S10 Lite is crispier but Z1X is keeping up. Now the reason why I compared it is now this picture from the Z1X has come up far better. Have a look at the bulb. And now I'm capturing the same frame with the S10 Lite. See this. This is an issue. S10 Lite is not able to capture the light properly. There is a flare. You can try it on your phone as well. So guys, time to conclude. S10 Lite has a lot of things that will make you love it. But then there are areas which are equally concerning. On top of that, the casual behavior of Samsung which I have seen for the first time like this wherein they have hardly bothered about letting customers know when the 4K 60fps option will be coming. Despite highlighting this on the Samsung members app and reaching out to India CEO desk, it got late and there was no update whatsoever as to when this will be actually aired. We were told on 28th but then eventually it came on the 2nd. So it's good that finally it came. But along with this update, they have provided another improvement area which actually they have goofed up. I'll show you the statement they have given in the update section and it's actually wrong to what they are saying. This is the snapshot of the update that has been recently aired to the S10 Lite. You can now record 4K videos at 60 FPS. You also get super steady mode to the UHD videos. Now this is the goof up I was talking about. This is not happening. As you get into the super steady mode, the videos that get recorded are FHD only. And I'll show you the video of that as well. Apart from that, they've mentioned improvement in the fingerprint scanner, which I don't see. Also, they've mentioned camera improvements, which are not something that you can actually gauge as an improvement. So all in all, the only thing that has happened is you have got 4K videos now getting recorded at 60 FPS. This is to ensure that we are on the latest release and you can see it's up to date. I'll show you the date. It's 11th March. Sorry for the video shaking a bit because I had to create it separately. Now I've clicked on the super steady mode and if I go to settings, you can see it's FHD only that it's recording. If Samsung works on the areas of concern that we have shown, this is one device which definitely will be one of the best in 40k segment and in coming time you'll definitely see the price going down as well if the price comes to around 37,000 or 35,000 this is definitely the best under 35 in the coming period. So guys this is it from my side we have covered everything and anything we thought of in case there's something you would like to know do let me know. In fact, we are planning for a FAQ video which will post two weeks after this video as in we'll collate all the information in two weeks once this video is posted and whatever questions that we get, we'll come up with the FAQ video on that. So if you have a question around it, do fire it away and we'll ensure that we capture it in the FAQ video. So friends, that's it for this video. I hope you really like the efforts that we have put in. It's a lengthy video, I believe. But then we have tried to capture as much as we could so that you spend your money carefully. At any given point, if you felt that you should subscribe to the channel, so please do that as it helps us grow and keeps us motivated. On this note, I'll take sign off. This is Harjot. You were watching For the Love of Gadgets. God bless. Take care.